All right, guys, I'm going to try to settle a debate right now. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try three different methods of bonding these two boards together and determine which one is stronger and maybe why. So we're going to bond two together with nothing but glue and some brad nails. That's it. The next one we're going to do screw and glue. The next one we're going to use caulking and screws. So a lot of guys, a lot of the uh, sort of older guys, they're going to try caulking and screws, the screws to get the strength of the caulking to get the seal. A lot of your newer guys, they're going to try the brads and the glue because they know that the glue is going to do the drying. Then we're going to try screws and glue. Do the screws help in place of the brad nail? Let's get into that. So what we have right here is a bunch of identical pieces of scrap that I cut from a long piece. We're going to glue these in a butt joint right here like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue that together just like that. We're going to let these sit all day. After that, we're going to try to break these and see which one is easier to break, which one flexes, etc. We're going to take a very deep dive into each one of these. So I'm going to get started putting these together. We're gonna start out with the old classic. A little bit of Lowe's Best caulking right here. We're gonna put a little strip on there. I shit you not, I used to build subwoofer boxes this way a long time ago, and I've seen a couple guys still do. You get the old joint made pretty tight right here. Get that caulking swished all the way around just like so. And then we're going to run some screws right down the top. Here's some cracking, popping. I say don't worry about it. All right. So this is the first one done right here. We've got three screws and nothing but the caulking and the screws. You see I don't have any weird gaps in there. We're not worried about fit and finish right now. We're just talking about this holding together. Lots of guys still build subwoofer boxes this way. You might swipe that down, clean it up. I'm not going to do that. But basically, this is a somewhat strong, I can even see right here, not even dried, and right now I can't get that to flex very easily. So I'm going to mark these right here, this one's caulk, and screw, okay? So the caulking, screws together, we're going to set this aside for an entire day. These next two methods I use all the time. Depending on the situation, you will need to use various types of techniques to get different outcomes depending on the situation you're in. The first one we're going to try to do is the old brad nail and glue method. Okay, let me go ahead and write on here brad and glue. Yep, just like that. So there's a big debate on glue, what type of glue. This is what I use, okay? This is Gorilla Wood Glue. Why do I use this? For whatever reason, since this stuff came out, it's amazing. I've been using this stuff for quite a few years. It's very, very strong. It's a little bit, I mean, a tiny bit flexible. So if you ever hit a big thing, it's not going to just crack that glue joint. It's actually going to allow it to flex a tiny bit. Not enough to make a difference, but a tiny bit. It's also stupid strong, and you're about to see in both these glue situations how strong this glue actually is, especially compared to the wood it's bonded to. There's other glues out there. Type Bond 1, 2, 3. They have different uses depending on what you're doing. They have interior, exterior, the Type Bond 1, 2, 3. I've used them before. I quit using all of them. Now, I'll tell you this. There is a Type Bond that is allowed to basically be sanded. It's very thin, sort of almost like a water base, and what it is, when you put it on there and you glue these together, 
you can sand that out, you can stain over top. This stuff will not stain. So if you're gluing this together, you need to sand all of this out before you can stain that box. Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put the glue on this side. This one's the flattest here, so we're gonna go ahead and put the glue right here. We're being a little generous. We're trying to we're trying to see which one's better. Okay. Now we're gonna glue these together. Now what I like to do, squish them just like so, get all that glue in the joint. Make me a nice little valley right there where all that glue is gonna start puddling up. But if you break it apart, you can see 100% glue on all that surface. Now, we're gonna send some brads through here. Line these up right quick. Give her the old push down. Shoot some brads. These brad guns are cheap. I think I got this one for like 25 bucks. Okay, so we shot three brads through there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean some of this glue up just because I don't want my bench dirty. This glue is gnarly. When it glues on there, it's not coming off, so I'm telling you, clean it up while it's wet. Don't try to come back later and say, oh yeah, I'll just clean up when I'm done. All right, now, if you let this sit just like this, you're gonna be okay. But, the whole idea of gluing with brads, they use a clamp. These clamps are cheap, a couple dollars a piece at Harbor Freight, okay? We're gonna put this clamp to good work. We're gonna clamp very tightly. And I want you to watch what happens whenever you clamp these together. The reason why you clamp these is to take any voids out. If you look at that glue joint there, before I clamp it real hard, before I clamp it on that side as well, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these clamps. Now, if you did it right the first time, like I just did a little technique of swiping it on, notice there's not a lot squeezing out because I got it out of there the first time. Okay, so the guy's arguing that clamping them gets all that glue out. You can see it made a very minimal difference putting a ton of pressure on there versus the way I had it before. Okay. This one's clamped up. This is one technique. Let's put it down. Go to the next one. Okay, the last technique is glue and screw. Glue and screw. Just like that. Now, why would you want to glue and screw? So, it's been well documented before that basically the clamping force here while it dries is very important if you want a nice strong connection. Okay. The reason why is it forces that glue into all of the different grains of the wood. That's very good stuff. That's stuff you want for a nice strong enclosure. We're going to glue these just like that. Now, here's where the debate comes into play. Is the screw necessary? If you simply clamp it like that and glue it together, is that going to be strong or does that screw add any support? To it now see what I do here I put it on there I wipe it eh? do a little wipe some guys paint it on there I've got tricks for that too and then you're gonna want to come and squish all that glue out just like that now if you can slide it you should be able to somewhat let that go you can see right there so if you can't let go of that for a split second you're not tight enough it wants if it wants to slide immediately you need to squish that down tighter. Now, we're going to go ahead and run some screws through this, just like before. One of the big downsides of screwing is it can split the wood. I say, to hell with it. Split wood, fill the glue, oh it's only stronger, right? Some people are very distasteful on split wood. Some people don't really care. 
I don't really care as long as it's not in a spot where it matters. The split wood is not going to make a lot of difference. So again, I'm going to clean this up because that's how I like to build my boxes. I like to build my boxes nice and clean, just like that. So this one you can see here also very strong. You see I'm trying to collapse that and I cannot because of those screws. So now we're going to set this down right here, let all these dry for one whole day. We're going to come back after a day and see which ones are stronger and why, and we'll go from there. One thing I didn't mention and I will not mention in this video is this stuff right here. Subfloor adhesive. Okay, this stuff is stronger than your will to live. This stuff right here will not come apart like your marriage. This stuff right here, I'm telling you, it, there is no better than subfloor adhesive when you want to bond two pieces of wood together. It's very flexible, it is very strong. This stuff right here, liquid nails, subfloor and deck, don't buy this stuff. You can see it's a light tan color. This stuff, uh, I wasn't too impressed with it. It did eventually harden up, but you can see right here, that hardened bit is still a little bit gooey. Whereas you see this brown stuff on the bottom here is a different brand. It is very flaky. This stuff is super strong. I don't know what the difference between this stuff and this stuff. They both say subfloor. The difference is the dark stuff is what you want. This light stuff, don't even buy it. Whatever you get, don't get this. This one here, no, 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 no. This will hurt your feelings, yeah? All right. If you use this stuff right here to hold your marriage together, you're going to have a bad time. If you use this stuff right here to hold your house together, Mr. Wolf is not going to huff puff and blow that bitch down. I'm telling you, it is going to stay put. So we're going to come back in a day, see what we got. Just for a recap, we got caulk and screw only. If you're doing this, you know that little meme where it's got the little poo bear who's like really high class versus middle class versus podunk? This is podunk. Okay, if you're still doing this, quit doing that. I'm telling you, this is cheaper. Quit doing that. Now, this one here, brad and glue, glue and screw, okay? Both using glue, two different types of methods. I understand this clamp is unwieldy and annoying, but the screw is gonna split your wood sometimes. Is that what you want? I don't know. All right, so sort of a different story. This box here was held together entirely by screws, glue, and subfloor adhesive. So this thing has a ton of subfloor adhesive, has a ton of screws, has a ton of glue. So the guy is saying that screws are bad. Look, I don't know. I don't know to tell you, right? Guys are gonna use screws. Quit bitching about it, right? What I can tell you is this box doesn't have a single pocket joint on it. I think if you use pocket joints for this kind of stuff, you know, I don't, I can't necessarily say that that's any strong. I think some people like that. I think a lot of people don't. So this guy is super strong, super dead, but it also has a lot of fiberglass. If you want stuff really strong, fiberglass is going to make it stronger, but it is not fun to work with. So 24 hours later, I'll see you. We'll check these out. All right. So this is the next day. Let's go ahead and pull these clamps off and see what we got right here. Basically, this one here is the brad and the glue. Pretty strong. Glue and screw, pretty strong. The caulking has set up completely. Also pretty strong. I can feel that one wiggling a little bit. So this is the caulking with the screws. You can see if I put some pressure down, you see right there where it's flexing. The screw is the only thing actually holding this in there. You can see that the screw is flexing and that caulking is doing nothing. It's still actually pretty strong. So screws definitely do something. Although I was able to break that by pushing down relatively easily. And if I broke it off, the screws broke somewhat easily you see in here this whole thing is coated completely you see it's all wet with that silicone I guess there's a reason why a lot of boxes I built this way have actually worked out pretty well if you don't have a ton of power it's probably not going to come apart 
If it starts rattling, maybe you could just tie a screw or something. Either way, this just isn't how we build boxes anymore. So, let me show you what the glue does. Okay, this piece right here is the brad and glue. Okay, so all this one has on it is the glue and the brads and the clamps held together while drying. Now, if you just clamp this without the brads, I can tell you the brads actually don't do very much. If you ever pull the brad out, they don't hold very hard. What they do do is stop this from moving while the glue dries, because that's a big thing. You go to clamp that, it's gonna start moving a little bit on you. If you brad it, then you clamp it, it's gonna stay put. Oop, I heard a little bit of crack. Push them down, another crack. And it cracked right half and two. Now, let's open this up. Let's take a better look at what happened right here. Okay, you see them brads, they didn't put up a fight at all. They literally just pulled right out. What I think you guys might find interesting to see though, is where it broke, okay? It's actually the veneer that broke off. The glue joint is still intact. Right here, 100% of that glue joint all the way down the line is intact. The outer layer of veneer is what broke off, okay? So it literally broke that veneer off instantly. With less force, I would say, than the previous test. So, this is fine, but you can see where that weak spot is, is actually that veneer between the plies. Okay, so if you had different types of plies, you might have different results. Now, this one is the glue and screw. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the vise. You can see right here on the top, we have some screws going in. Three just the same as the other one. And of course we have the glue and the joint. Now, the glue is going to be the strongest part of the joint when it comes to bonding that piece of wood to that piece of wood. And if this was the MDF joint, the last result might be a little different. But we're gonna go ahead and apply some force to this one. You can hear some cracking. I'm having to put quite a bit more pressure on it. <clears throat> okay, that's a lot of force. I'm putting probably 150 pounds of force on there. If I can give it, that's probably 200 pounds. I'm pretty heavy, dude. Oh, I had chunks flying in the air. Okay, Okay. so check this out. The same thing, that veneer layer came unglued off the edge of that board. You can see right there, the glue held its weight entirely. These screws actually held it together. You see here, that screw is pulled through that entire piece of wood right there. That screw did not give up. These are not particularly great screws either. So, basically, yeah, the, the screws do quite a bit to hold the wood together. So anyone who's saying, don't use screws, uh, I don't know. I'd rather have that screw than that veneer. The veneer can pull off quite easy that screw did not. The two of them together made a nice, tight, airtight seal in that piece right there. And that's what you want. So glue and screw, I don't know, that's kind of the way 